the sea. Oh my god. Okay, it's just <laughs> it's just a raven. I'm sorry. I'm alone deep in the woods. I think I have uh, uh, lost my way. Don't tell every anybody. I always do. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, excuse me. Uh, Norway is yes. No. Kommuner, as we say. I, I'm sorry. We just had. I just had to speak. Uh, that crow has decided that this is not the place for me to sit, but uh, hopefully he will stop answering when I'm speaking. Uh, okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's... <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Oh, uh, still Okay. Uh, yes. Okay, guys. Uh, I'll just uh, will. I can do this with him speaking over me all the time. Okay. <laughs> it's not giving up. Yeah. Hi guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Nina. And if you are new, I'm so happy you decided to join me here in the Norwegian woods uh, and on YouTube uh, and to my loyal and always loving uh, subscribers and viewers. Hi guys! In today's video I thought I would show you how we spent our first week at our new cabin. Uh, if you have followed us for a while you know that uh, some two, three or weeks ago, we bought a mountain farm uh, in the inland of Norway in an area called Valdres. It's a beautiful uh, place and uh, we fell for this uh, mountain farm immediately uh, and was uh, lucky enough to get it. And I thought that since I, in my last video, showed you how we decorated and kind of moved in, in this video I would show you how we spent our first week. I will also give you, because this is not just, or uh, when we bought the mountain farm, it's not only the mountain farm, it's also kind of a it's called in Norwegian we call the, we call it a fishing cabin uh, in the mountains. It's kind of a fancy boathouse uh, by a lake uh, at about 950 meters below sea level. Uh, and I didn't get to show you that in the last video, so here's a look at our um, fishing cabin, cabin in the mountains. You say take me on a treasure hunt When they sing and dance Oh, I wish it was me Every night When I close my eyes I see
Another thing that's special about this property is that in this part of the country or in the uh, mountains, uh, the farmers own the pastures and the mountains in a kind of uh, co-op um, and since our cabin is a mountain farm as, and have uh, been a working farm uh, many years ago uh, we still have we still own we're still a part of this cooperation or this co-op where we own part of the mountain together with a lot of farmers and we also have a ca another cabin uh, it's about six kilometers from the main uh, mountain farm uh, and it's a kind of a fishing cab cabin uh, by the lake so we haven't been since uh, taking over so we're going there to check that everything is okay and maybe do a little bit of work on that. We have been driving for five kilometers and now it is about one kilometer or a thousand meters to walk. guys it's a small cabin but it can house six people for a sleepover uh, the first room is just a small room with a bed and some cupboards it's all in wood and then you come into the kind of main room with a loft that can house three it's a sofa a table some chairs and a kitchen area with a gas uh, cooking Thing. 
and this is how it turned out i didn't do much but we hang hung a chandelier i brought some rose painted decor some candlesticks some uh, skins and some blankets uh, i'm going to paint uh, hang some pictures and buy some uh, uh, rugs uh, so we have a lot of plans uh, on how to decorate this If you're wondering where I am, I actually have cheated a bit. I wanted the aesthetics of the uh, of the intro and this talking, chit-chatting, to uh, be uh, cohesent with the aesthetic of uh, the farm. Uh, I'm actually at home, in the woods at home. Uh, as you may have seen from my kind of bloopers in the intro, I'm competing with the animals of the forest, uh, so uh, hopefully I have scared the crow off and uh, I can tell you a bit about uh, what we did our first week. Uh, as you saw, we uh, went to the uh, fishing cabin and did um, a little bit of uh, decorating as I said we had to walk it's about a mile um, it's about yeah a kilometer one kilometer or maybe one and a half so about a mile to walk after we have driven for about five kilometers uh, so everything you bring you have to carry for uh, a mile uh, so I didn't want to take too much. Uh, my loving and lovely husband, he carries uh, what I bring. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, I want to do more. I want to paint the cupboards and we have a lot more plants for the fishing cup, uh, cabin and we also have to change the roof. It's too steep to have uh, grass on that uh, roof so it slides off so I think we are going to uh, going to get an um, oh my god a tick so I think we are going to get a wooden roof uh, but not this year so after we we had uh, visited we visited the fishing cabin two times uh, our first trip and we also took as i said we not only own the fishing cabin we don't own any area around it uh, ourselves or it's not ours it's just the cabin but we together with a lot of other farmers we have a very small percentage of a uh, mountain anyways so we took and it's a national park so we took a drive into the national park uh, to uh, look around none of us uh, has been in Valdres uh, been much in Valdres before so there's a lot to get to know and on the way we met there are uh, this year it was 12 horses uh, grazing uh, in the mountains uh, they have just released uh, these are uh, riding horses I guess and they have released them in, in on, on the mountain so they're grazing and of course being horse owners ourselves when we met the horses uh, we had to stop uh, and say hello 
And anybody who knows uh, horses know that when they uh, are kind of uh, on their summer vacation, uh, summer pastures, they almost get a bit wild. Uh, and that was our experience with these horses. They were very sweet, but there was a, uh, a boy or a, I don't know if he was a stallion or uh, I think he may have been, but as you see from the footage, he wanted to protect his ladies, so we uh, had to get back in the car and kind of look at them from afar and uh, cuddle them from the car, but they were a lovely, lovely flock of or group of horses on a treasure hunt I long for something new Have you heard the fairies when they sing and dance Oh, I wish it was me Another thing we love about our uh, cabin is all the cows. There are free roaming cows uh, all summer long. Uh, several herds and uh, they kind of compete uh, over where to graze. Uh, and they are not afraid. So. Uh, you just have to take your time when you meet them. They usually stand in the middle of the road and you have to kind of persuade them to move. <laughs> and we also have, and this year it was about, I think, uh, nine or ten young cows uh, in a pasture next to our property. And they were so cute, but we had a kind of a frightening experience. We had been out shopping and when we came back, it kind of looked like we couldn't decide if the cow was inside or outside uh, our uh, property. And when we stopped and went over, we saw that one of the cows had tried to jump the fence and had uh, caught her back legs. In the fence and she had been kind of uh, she had been trying to get uh, get free uh, and had had uh, driven the metal wire into her legs so I had to try to keep her calm and my husband had to get a, a thong and or a wire cutter and cut the wire to get her loose uh, and she had the the, oh, the saddest mooing I've ever heard I felt so sorry for her but we got her loose and we we led her out of our property and onto the road and of course she was the cow with the bell and that's the cow that all the other cows follow so uh, they were kind of running along in, on the other side of the fence. So we got her inside and we uh, got someone to call the farmer that owned the cows and he called the vet, vet and uh, yeah, she got taken care of and 
was uh, back the next day uh, and uh, was doing fine. She, she was the first cow that they took home uh, and I'm sure she got uh, a lot of uh, uh, love and care when she got far back to her farm. So that's the cows uh, and I'm sure I'm going to film them a lot in the future as well. I'm sorry if there's a lot of noise and it seems strange. I'm actually kind of uh, deep in the woods but we live by in the woods but by the sea so there's uh, not many meters uh, away there's a lot of boats uh, driving. Uh, we also have a lovely little lake in kind of the middle of the valley where our cabin is at and uh, there's a, I think the fish is called trout you know the fish with the red dots on so uh, my husband and my grandson they love to fish I actually like to fish as well I haven't done much this year but I'm sure I'm going to in the future uh, but they were fishing a lot it's a very cold water uh, not as cold as uh, at the mountain uh, lake but it's cold uh, but my husband and my grandson had a quick swim uh, and it's just a, a lovely place I was admiring the swans uh, flying and swimming around the lake until we remembered that uh, these swans have children, uh, babies, and we, want in, we were wondering where are the babies. And I think there was a guy there with an uh, with a boat with a small electric motor that is not allowed in Norway uh, in this kind of lakes but he did it anyway and I think he had scared the swan babies away they were probably hiding and the parents were uh, were uh, flying and swimming calling for them the whole time we were there uh, I stopped hearing them uh, later that evening, so I, I think they may have found their uh, babies. But uh, what I thought was uh, beautiful <laughs> flying swans suddenly became a bit sad. But as I said, I think they found their way back to their babies. <laughs>
Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed seeing how we spent our first week at the cabin. I've had some questions about uh, several, thing, several things. Some of you uh, wondered if uh, this was just a summer cabin or if we are going to use it uh, in the winter time as well. And we will. Uh, in Norway it's kind of you spend the summer at the sea and the winter at the mountains so uh, we have actually just bought a new car uh, to be able to uh, easier access get access to the cabin there is a farmer that will uh, plow is that what it's called uh, he will take away the snow uh, in winter time so we can use it all year uh, and I uh, also got some questions if we are going to spend Christmas there and I would love to I'm sure we all would love to uh, as for now we have the horses and we are we are hoping that we can bring the horses in summertime but in winter time we don't have a stable uh, we are actually thinking about uh, restoring uh, one of the buildings uh, that's already there is the old stable but the foundation has uh, is gone so we are wondering about um, or not wondering about we are going to renovate that so maybe we can use that for the horses but at the same time they, they are getting old and it's uh, a long drive on as I said bad roads so yeah we'll see but when the horses are gone in hopefully many years uh, we for sure will spend Christmas uh, there as well uh, we all, always spend Christmas together with my daughter and grandson so uh, even though they could uh, take care of the horses and we could go or the other way around I'm sure that uh, we all want to spend it together so we'll probably wait to go uh, until we can go all of us together another question was about the roofing the grass on the roof if that was a lot of work and it actually can be um, it depends on how good uh, a job they have done when they made the roof uh, and which part of the country you live in uh, as all kind of grass it needs uh, water that's usually not a problem in Norway because we have a lot of rain and especially in the area where this cabin is there will be a lot of rain uh, and the roofs kind of hold on to the water for a long time so that has not been a problem but if if we get a year of drought that's something we have to watch for the grass is not supposed to get too long either so some people cut the grass uh, and of course trees want to uh, grow uh, on the roofs and that's uh, as you can imagine the roots of the tree can uh, make holes they, there are plastic underneath the grass and you don't want the roots to dig into that because then you will get a leak so you have to take away the trees growing on the the roof and you can you cannot just jank them out because then you uh, can uh, destroy uh, or damage the roof underneath the grass so if you cannot uh, if it's uh, been there for a while so the roots are kind of digging in you usually have to use some kind of poison to just use on the individual trees to 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 take them away it has a shorter uh, life uh, expectancy than a kind of normal roof uh, but I think it's worth it because it looks uh, so wonderful uh, 
did I have any other questions? Mm, yeah, and someone, somebody also wondered about the water situation, if we are going to continue to kind of uh, haul water from the creek or the well. Uh, and the answer to that is that we are probably going to drill for water. Uh, the toilet situation and uh, everything is okay, it, it will be difficult to get a septic car or tank to, to come and empty that, so I think we will stick with the electric toilets, uh, but uh, the water situation or to have clean water and enough of it, I think we will uh, be doing something about. So we will probably drill for water but it's expensive so I don't think right now but in a couple of years maybe. Maybe already next year we'll, we'll see. Okay guys uh, <laughs> this this uh, forest life that looks so romantic uh, is uh, I'm getting I'm being eaten alive by ticks and as you know that's not a good thing so I think I'll just gather up my things and uh, try to find my way back home I always get lost in this uh, forest uh, usually I have my dogs to kind of help me uh, find my way back uh, so if I'm not answering any comments when this video is out maybe I'm still walking around in the woods I I'm just kidding of course I will and, and that reminds me one of you asked is there uh, isn't there animals big bears and things in the woods that we are walking in and yes there is not here here is, there are no bears but they are there are wolves and I have seen them uh, a couple of times. They are so scared, so if you see one, you're kind of lucky. Uh, I think the most dangerous thing in these woods are ticks. You don't want the diseases that the ticks are carrying. And moose, moose mummies with babies. I don't want to run into one of those but otherwise I always feel safe so I'm sure I'm going to get home or I can just call and I'm sure they're coming to get me thank you so much for watching and I think my next video is going to be a fall decor video uh, I'm feeling the need to kind of decorate my house is very much neglected in summer. In summer we stay out so the house is uh, usually a mess all summer uh, but now we are getting into fall so I hope I can start my fall decorating and maybe some DIYing. Have a wonderful week you guys and stay safe and I'll see you again in my next video. Bye!